What is going on internet? My name is Lou and I make Linux videos and I put them on the internet. So today I have a nice big cup of espresso and an install of Linux Mint 15 XFCE edition. So I thought I'd give you guys my thoughts and opinions on this uh, distro release. The good, the bad, the ugly, who should be using it and why. So for those of you who've followed my channel for a while, you know that there's a big place in my Linux heart for Linux Mint. Uh, the reason being is it is the distro, specifically Linux Mint 10, that converted me uh, over to Linux full time from Mac OS 10. So I love the Mint team. I love their contributions to the Linux desktop. And uh, admittedly, I think the last, I want to say the last real release of Mint that I was using full time, and I, I was really an exclusive Mint user for a long time. I want to say it was Linux Mint 11, maybe 12, um, but I haven't really used it consistently since then. I've tested things out here and there, and, and that's because I'm not a huge Cinnamon fan. I think when GNOME 3 and GNOME Shell hit the scene, it changed the game for a lot of distros. Uh, I still love the Mint team. I love what they're doing. Cinnamon's just not for me, however. Um, but I do like F XFCE. And I wanted to try, you know, Mint's take on it. And I really think this is a winner here. So let's look at some of the main features and um, additions to Linux Mint 15 XFCE. So it's built on top of, of course, the XFCE 4.10 desktop. One of the additions is the Whisker menu. This menu I have found to be just a joy to use. It's an independent project outside of the XFCE desktop environment. However, it's built specifically for XFCE. I think it's blazing fast. I think it adds a really nice throwback feel to Linux Mint. Again, maybe back to version 10 or 11 in the Mint menu. Now, I will say, as much as I do like the Whisker menu, and I, th I think it fits Linux Mint's design philosophy quite well, for those of you who have ever used the old Linux Mint 10 menu, I think it does lack in features compared to the Mint menu, and I would have really liked to see the Mint team include the Mint menu in this particular release. Um, one of the reasons why I don't like to get too attached to things like this is because it's developed outside of both the distribution as well as the desktop environment. So if development stops, then this ends up getting, unless of course the distribution picks up development, you know, uh, this particular piece of the desktop environment gets removed. And I don't like to get too attached to something and really kind of tailor my workflow around it and then have it be gone. So I would have really liked to see the Mint team come, uh, bring in their Mint menu into the XFCE desktop. Um, so that's my only, you know, kind of uh, feedback uh, on this particular area of the release. I do love the menu. Uh, I prefer it to the standard traditional XFCE menu, um, but I would really like to see the Mint menu come back. So that is the Whisker menu. We have the Mint Display Manager. This is a GTK greeter. It's themable. It's an HTML based greeter. Uh, it looks great. It works really nicely. Um, I like what they've done here to the Mint Display Manager. Software sources. So before we get into the next couple of tools, this is one of the reasons why I love Mint. You know, people, early days, people would criticize Mint saying it's basically a themed up version of Ubuntu. Um, not so. This is some of these next tools are a great reason why, you know, Mint is what it is today. And I think it's part of the reason why they're so successful. You know, they take everyday items that the Linux user would need and they try to make it easier and they make nice tools for it. And they're very thoughtful in the things that they do. So software sources is one of those things. So if we open up the Whisker menu here and go into our software sources tool. Well, you know what? I opened the software manager. We're going to review that anyway, so hopefully just leave that open. Okay, so here's the software sources tool. This is the official repositories uh, layout. Now it's going to, by default, it should select the mirror that's actually the fastest for wherever you live geographically. In this case, this is where um, this is the mirror that it chose for me. When you uh, click on the mirrors there, it's going to now display them using this nice colored bar graph um, based on the fastest all the way down to the slowest. And of course, you can change the mirror if you'd like uh, or select something else. PPAs. You know, if you're using something that's based in Ubuntu, one of the big draws, at least for me, 
is that you can use PPAs, personal package archives. Many of the developers that put software in the Ubuntu repositories or in the Ubuntu Software Center have PPAs up on Launchpad, so you'll be able to update your system with the latest and greatest bleeding edge version of their software. So right now, this is a good example. I swapped out the traditional icon theme that comes with Mint 15 with the Fianza icon theme. It's one of my favorites, and I have the PPA set up here. You can add new PPAs, you can edit the URL, and you can remove PPAs. Here's your additional repositories here, your authentication keys, and we have a nice little maintenance option as well. This is a you know, nuts and bolts tool that helps you manage things that Linux users, especially on an Ubuntu-based system, would use each and every day. And I think it's great that the Mint team has released this tool. It makes a lot of sense. Down to the next tool, which is their driver manager. Again, um, if you're on the desktop, and by desktop, of course, I mean desktop or laptop, you know, drivers, uh, official proprietary drivers, um, right from the hardware manufacturers, are uh, a necessity at times. And this is a nice tool. And of course, Ubuntu has had their jockey tool, which is a really basic tool that uh, the Ubuntu team has had in their distribution for some time. Um, but it is a nice way to manage your proprietary drive, uh, drivers. So either a graphics driver, in my case, for my NVIDIA GeForce GTX 650 graphics card, or my Broadcom wireless card. So why do I think it's important or it's nice that Mint started kind of developing their own tool for this? Some would say, why duplicate efforts if Ubuntu already has their own tool? And I think that's part of one of the things that makes Linux great and one of the things that at times hold it back. Linux tends to borrow things from one another. All these projects borrow different things. And then you kind of have a mishmash when you have this a distribution release of this person's tool or this person's piece of software or this person's program, so on and so forth. I think that projects like Linux Mint or even Elementary OS are doing a wonderful thing by developing all their own software in-house because if a project decides to, again, stop development or their development on that project starts to go in a direction that you don't like, if you're the distribution maintainer, then if you have your own tool, you can have all that kind of control. Now, you know, we see this in projects like uh, Ubuntu right now. They're moving farther and farther away from relying on things like GNOME or even Xorg and developing their own um, display servers or their own desktops, so on and so forth. So. You could say that that's bad. You could argue that it's good. Um, but I think in this particular case, with something like a driver manager, which is some, so basic and fundamental to the desktop, I'm glad to see that Linux Mint has released their own uh, driver manager tool to select a driver you'd like. And of course, it even gives a recommended driver. Just bullet the one you'd like and hit apply changes. It's that easy. Now, I do have videos on how to install proprietary graphics drivers. Um, but, you know, for the basic user who doesn't want to really roll up their sleeves, that's a nice little tool uh, that you can use there. Software Manager, I mentioned that already. For those of you who have used Linux Mint before, their software manager has not changed a ton. It's very basic. I think it is a bit lackluster compared to even the Ubuntu Software Center, which I feel as though could use a little bit of revving. Um, but it gets the job done. So that's the software manager. The welcome screen is really nice. I think if you're a new Linux Mint user, a new Linux user, um, after the install, being uh, greeted with this screen is really, really great. Um, you can have quick access to things like documentation, support, different parts of the project, and the actual Linux Mint community, which I think is great. They've got some new wallpapers in here, which is not a huge, <laughs> not a huge deal. We don't even bother looking at those. Um, and upstream components, of course, Mint 15 is based on Ubuntu 13.04, Linux kernel 3.8, and Mint Display Manager 1.2 with XFCE 4.10. What I can tell you is uh, that it is blazing fast. This distro is so so quick. Everything opens instantly. Now, I do have a beefy system, but honestly, this is not using a lot of resources. We're only using 7% of memory here, and my CPU usage is only 17%. Now, that's high considering I'm using um, FFmpeg, which is taking up a whole about a quarter of a gig in and of itself. So it's very, very lightweight. So for those of you that have systems that are on limited resources, you want a traditional 
desktop, which is kind of a point and click desktop, I like to call it, um, but yet still feels modern. This is a great distribution for you. Honestly, it's been the best XFCE distro I've used um, to date. I really like it. Uh, stability has been rock solid, not a single crash, not a single lockup. Everything's been awesome. You know, so stability has been two thumbs up. This is a uh, native uh, install right on the middle, so it's not in VirtualBox. I've been able to test it now for a few days, um, and it's been great. It's been rock solid. I really, really like it. So, uh, again, for those of you who are looking for that traditional desktop that do appreciate a nice aesthetic because it looks great, this is the GTK theme that Linux Mint's been using now for quite some time. You know, it looks great, it's really, really solid. You have an Ubuntu base, so if you wanted to use things like PPAs, you have that access. If you wanted things like uh, lots of commercial software, you know, for instance, um, we'll open up Software Manager again. You know, if a big company is going to release software on Linux, oftentimes Ubuntu is the distro that they release it for. It's just the tallest nail um, in the box, so that's that's why it ends up happening. In fact, Steam has officially announced that Ubuntu is its um, officially supported distribution. So of course now we have Steam right here in the software uh, repositories. Now, you know, distros like Arch had it very, very early on as well. Um, but when you look at projects like Debian or even Fedora, there's some hoops you had to jump through. And it was kind of annoying uh, to be able to use Steam on some of those distros. Whereas if you were an Ubuntu user, you know, you had it right in the repos or you had a dev package that you could get right from um, Valve's website. So I like the fact that something like Steam, if you're a gamer, you'll appreciate this, is right in the repositories. So, you know, the Ubuntu repos have tons of really, really great software sitting in their repos. So that's about it, guys. That's my review of Linux Mint 15. I give it two thumbs up. Uh, it is a wonderful distribution. It's a great release. I would like to see that Mint menu out of everything I say today <laughs> about this uh, distro. If you just brought that classic Mint menu back, um, it would be amazing. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this re uh, this review of Linux Mint 15. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I do try to release regular content. And give this video a thumbs up and share it if you like it. But as always, guys, you are awesome. I really appreciate the support. Thank you, and we'll talk to you next time.